Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to another Vintage Cube draft. Still having a lot of fun. Um, the last draft proved to me that doing fair things is not good enough. We need to be doing unfair stuff. So, what can we take out of this pack that's unfair? I could take Luris and try and do like a Luris stipulation. Um, like a Luris aggro and actually have him as a companion to the deck. I mean, that's got to be good to some extent, right? It's just a pretty hefty stipulation. But this card is banned in, like, every format, right? I mean, it's got to be good. Um, the alternative is taking something like a Utopia Sprawl or a Memory Jar. Yeah, let's, let's try. We'll take Luris and look, all right? Let's see what's happening here. Okay, so in this pack we've got... There's a Volcanic Island, a Mystic Confluence, there's a Signet, Divining Top, Bone Shards, and Exhum. Um, Exhum is probably the most unfair thing in this pack, and I haven't drafted Reanimator in a while. If Bone Shards wheels, we'll have a discard outlet that's really good with Exhum, because you can Bone Shards turn one, Exhum turn two. Uh, that's not really playing the Luris deck like I initially had hoped, but there's also not a lot that we can actually play with Luris that makes sense. Like, Top is good, the fixing is good, Everflowing Chalice would be fine, but let's take the early Exhum and just to see what's available. Okay, there's none Burial Rites. Um, unfortunately, Blightsteel is not a reanimatable gigantic threat. Uh, there's an Esper Sentinel, um, which we could play alongside Luris. Uh, and that's about it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the Unburial Rites. Okay, Grave Titan. Grave Titan's a big reanimatable threat. Uh, there's also Duress. Duress could be pretty good. Um, generally top end threats like Grave Titan and such do not, um, get picked super highly. And there's a lot of them, right? So, like, even if I don't get Grave Titan, I could get Inferno Titan, or I could get Primeval Titan, or I could get Emrakul, or Iona, or any of that stuff. And it's not the biggest of the big, so I'm actually going to take Duress, because I can play this in any black deck that I'm playing. Uh, Fatal Push helps keep us alive, and it keeps us mono black for now. Preordain is really good, because um, we can dig. Assassin's Trophy just answers any problem permanent. I think I'm going to take Fatal Push. It's another cheap, powerful black spell. And generally, like Reanimator, you play almost mono black. Sometimes you splash white for Unburial Rites um, flashback. Um, and then you just have, like, whatever Terastodon, Iona, Elish Norn, top end you can find. Okay. Um, as Merrick Fiend does kind of support the game plan, there's a Battle Ball, which is a Reanimator threat. Like, you know, any way you can cheat out Battle Sphere is going to be good. I kind of like Mesmeric Fiend, and just making the early game as consistent as possible here. There's nothing really else in this pack we're considering, other than maybe Mere Battlesphere, but we should find something to reanimate. It doesn't, you know, doesn't have to be Battle Ball. And it's, it's better in the Artifacts deck anyway, it's just kind of like a reasonable thing to cheat. So we're looking for Entomb, Animate Dead. Um, we could, we could play like Oath Reanimator. Um, but then we need, like, the biggest of the big creatures. The other option here is to take, like, an Eternal Witness or a Carrion Feeder or even a Mana Tithe. But I'm going to take the Oath. Um, no guarantee we're playing this, but, you know, Oath into Grizzlebrand is something you can do. I mean, it's better when you're hitting Eldrazi, but if we get, like, an Archon of Cruelty, that would be fantastic. Because that is a threat you could reanimate or Oath into and feel pretty good about. Unless it's like the last card in your deck and then it's Enter the Battlefield Trigger kills you. Which would be really funny and probably would happen to me, but you never know. Um, we're also looking for like Bazaar of Baghdad. There's a Dark Depths. Uh, Nighthawk Scavenger. Avenger of Zendikar is another big thing you can reanimate. But if you reanimate Re Avenger of Zendikar and have like no lands on the board, it's not actually that good. I'm going to take Dark Depths because it kind of, you can fit it into this deck. Uh, Hex Mage is a card that is black that you can play and just makes Dark Depths good. If we get like a Thespian Stage, the, the price of playing Dark Depths Thespian Stage in a deck like this is very low. Uh, you do have to play this land as a spell. Like, it has to be like your 18th or whatever land, 18th plus land, because it doesn't tap for mana at all. And I don't think Urborg is in this cube. I think it used to be, or maybe that was Legacy Cube. But it's not, I, I, I've not seen it in this one in like 20 vintage cubes now. Okay, there's an Infernal Grasp. There's an Elder Gargaroth. Like, we could reanimate an Elder Gargaroth. 
but there's going to be better options. So we're going to take the removal spell and play like mono black control into a big threat. So I'll stick Dark Depths and Oath of Druids into a maybe pile right now. Um, Prime Time, Inferno Titan, or Bone Shards? I think I'm going to take Bone Shards. It is a turn one discard outlet. Both of those Titans missing them uh, kind of sucks. Um, either one of them would have been good in this deck, but like I said, they're not Iona, they're not Elishnorn, they're not Terastodon, they're not Archon. I don't think Sarah's Emissary is in this uh, in this cube. Because th there is support for Reanimator, but they generally pick the like higher power cards. Uh, we wouldn't mind Dark Ritual, because something like Dark Ritual Bone Shards or Dark Ritual Entomb plus Exhum is absolutely a thing you can do. Um, we can take Dam. It's a, you know, it's a board wipe. There's a Plain Swamp Forest and a Plain Swamp Island. But, like I said, if we're splashing, we're probably just splashing white um, or green. So... Um, if I'm playing any of these cards, it's Council's Judgment. If I'm playing these cards, it's Assassin's Trophy. I don't like that they used this art for Assassin's Trophy. Um, I understand that this is really cool, right? But the problem is this doesn't really look like a magic card to me. Um, and in Cube, it's very important to be able to recognize the cards by their art. And... That was why there was so much pushback when there was a version of the Vintage Cube that came out and they just used like every special art, the most recent one they could find, and it was like impossible to play the cube. Or it wasn't Vintage Cube, I think it was actually some other cube that used a bunch of Eternal Format legal cards. And like, I tried drafting it and I hated it because I was like, I memorized all the arts for these cards just by playing Vintage Cube a ton and now it's taking me like agonizingly long to make every pick because I have to relook at every single card and really make sure I know what it is. Um, and so I, I just cards that have arts like this kind of like throw a wrench in the whole process for me. And it's fine because I think Assassin's Trophy is like really the only one, but still, you know. So we've got a pretty good reanimator start. We have some removal spells, some hand hate, um, you know, a discard outlet, and two reanimation spells. And that's a that's a pretty good opener. Hopefully, I did not disconnect. I think somebody in this draft may have. Oh man, demonic tutor. Ah, demonic tutor in this deck would be really good because then we can go get whatever we're missing or like our biggest reanimation threat. But there's a mox. The Mox can help us cast, like, Exhum or uh, some of our other bigger reanimation spells. I think this is a deck where I'm actually going to take Tutor over a Mox, and I don't know if that's correct or not, but it's going to be a lot more consistent, and as long as we consistently do something powerful, this deck will be good. So I'm going to take the Tutor. A Thoughtseize is good. Ulamog would fit in an Oath, uh, if we were playing an Oath version of the deck. I am going to take a Thoughtseize here. Alright, I have to run my dryer in the background, so if uh, it might mess up my recording a little bit, but uh, we'll see. There's a Shallow Grave, Liliana the Last Hope. Uh, Shallow Grave does let us reanimate like a big um, uh, Eldrazi, because it is an instant speed reanimation spell, which is kind of rare. I think I do have to take it. Um, hopefully we can wheel like a sneak attack. Liliana would be great, especially if we had Dark Ritual, but we're gonna take the reanimation spell. We just need like one or two good reanimator threats, and we've still not really seen any. We've seen some of like the lower power ones. We just need a high power reanimator threat. Um, and I don't think someone is in reanimator because Bone Shards came around pretty late too so uh, we need to be on the lookout for thespian stage for maybe the dark depths combo dark ritual liliana the veil uh entomb I'm trying to think if there's anything else because i mean like if we get dark ritual and entomb then the possibility not only exists for dark ritual and entomb exhum but dark ritual entomb something like emercool shallow grave and that's really good okay so there's Bazaar. Hopefully Bazaar comes around. Um, it generally goes pretty late unless somebody is in Reanimator. I'm going to take Woodfall Primus because this is really the first threat that's like, okay, it's a good Reanimator threat. It, you know, deals with a non-creature permanent, generally a problematic land or something like that. 
We're gonna take Woodfall Primus. We're gonna try and wheel Bizarre. We have to take some threat, otherwise we're... What are we, reanimating Lurus? <laughs> like, it's, you know. So, we have the core of a deck that will work. Okay, um... There's an Underground Sea, which is fixing... This is not a Dark Confidant deck. I think I take Imperial Seal. Um, you can play a green-blue reanimator deck, and that is one of the stronger variants of the deck, because then you, like, back up your reanimation with counter spells and stuff. But we're kind of far away from that. <coughs> Apparently Porter is... Porter! Come over here. Come here, buddy. Come here, lay down. Something startled him. He's a big pansy. I apologize for the barking. It's probably going to scare somebody, especially wearing headphones. But, like... And he's probably going to bark here. <coughs> Again. Um... Yeah, Porter is a really big pansy. He's got some Rottweiler in him, so he's got this, like, super intimidating bark. Which makes him an excellent guard dog, because he's harmless. But, like, uh, okay, so Dismember would be good. We have a lot of removal. We definitely want Entomb. 100% taking Entomb here. Um, Hex Drinker wouldn't be bad in a deck like this, but uh, especially if we were going for the Lurus stipulation, but we're not. So, yeah, Porter's got, he has a Collie Lab, a Border Collie Lab Rottweiler mix. So, one of his parents was a Lab, and the other parent, I think, was a Border Collie Rottweiler mix. And, um, so he's got, he's really intelligent because he's got the Border Collie. He is very playful because he's a lab, but he's also, like, slightly paranoid and very scary, intimidating sounding because he's a Rottweiler. Um, but, like, he's, it's really funny because he's kind of scared of people. He doesn't like new people. He loves new people, he loves new dogs, and if you bring a dog for him to play with, that makes you a friend in his eyes, basically. But, like, uh, there's Thespian Stage. I'm going to take that over Sun Titan, Vraska, Douthy, Voidwalker. Voidwalker could be good because we have Thoughtseize, but I'm going to take the Thespian Depths combo because I've not actually played it in anything yet. But Porter is, um, he thinks new people are scary. So the way that he reacts to scary things is he goes, I need to scare the scary thing away, so I'm going to be as scary as I possibly can be. So he goes, he runs right up to him, he does this real intimidating bark, and if that doesn't scare them off, he's like, well, that was the only trick in my bag of tricks, and then he runs away. It's it's super funny. He's a he's just a big pansy, and I love him to death. But it, it does it does legitimately scare people, um, and I feel really bad. But you know, uh, I'll take a necromancy, um, lion's eye diamond, Volrath stronghold. Not really for this deck. We'll just take another reanimation spell, and now we're just looking for like bizarre of Baghdad, dark ritual. Anything we can reanimate. Um, so I don't think we're playing any of these. I don't think we're playing Oath. We have four reanimation spells. We have Entomb. We just need... Um, probably not even playing Assassin's Trophy at this point. We're just Mono Black Reanimator. We just need... Probably a, one more discard outlet and then Threats. Uh, him to Turok. That can disrupt our opponent. Um, Garrick is not bad. Because you can use him to, like, uh, survival of the fittest and go get a creature, but we have no mana dorks. So I'm just going to take the Hymn to Turok. Uh, we probably are not getting an Ulamog here. Oh, there is an Ulamog. I will take an Ulamog then. Uh, that gives us Entomb Shallow Grave. Um, technically, you sack it at the beginning of the next cleanup step. So we can Necromancy an Ulamog, but we would have to sack it and shuffle our grave back in. So, I also will stand by my Demonic Tutor pick over um, the Mox here. Liliana the Last Hope came around. This is a Plain Swamp, so, like, that helps us splash the Overload of Damnation. But I think Lily, like, versus a random green deck is very good. Um, we can buy back Mesmeric Fiend. Yeah, we'll take Lily. It's not as good as Liliana the Veil, because Liliana the Veil we can ditch... Um, a big creature into the grave and immediately reanimate it with something because it's a zero cost discard outlet uh, like on turn four or turn two if you have a uh, dark ritual um, bitter blossom is strong especially with like recurring nightmare I'm gonna take the scrubland because of dam um, I'm not hundred percent sure that that's what we're doing it also helps us splash on burial rights so it's kind of low cost but I think we've already I don't know if we've seen marsh flats or not but I think we have seen marsh flats <laughs> this is not a Dark Confidant deck. Not with an Ulamog in it. 
Uh, I'll take Karmic Guide. It is a reanimation spell, but I really highly doubt I'm going to have enough white sources to actually play a, a Karmic Guide. We've passed, I think, both Swamp Plains Trilands. Uh, Tide Hollow Sculler would be reasonable in a deck like this. I don't know that I'm playing it, though. And a Sun Titan. Okay, I mean, I can take a Sun Titan. You can do some broken stuff with Sun Titan, but um, it's not fantastic in Reanimator, but it's like it's okay. Um, especially if you like start with a fetch and then you reanimate it super quickly, you can like get a little bit ahead on mana. There's Mox Pearl, Vampire Hexmage, Inkwell Leviathan, Emmercool of the Promised End, Grist. We got a lot of things in this pack. Um, Hexmage will come around and then we can play it with Dark Depths. Emmercool probably won't, but this card is not super great to reanimate. It's big. I think I'm going to take the Mox this time. We should be able to get something out of this pack. So, I'm going to take the Mox. It is another white mana source. If we do decide we're going to play Karmic Guide or, um, you know, whatever. We'll see. Let's see, Karn Liberated, Consecrated Sphinx. There's a Rishidan port. Wandering Emperor, Worn Power Stone. Um, we can reanimate Consecrated Sphinx. It's not the greatest thing in the world. Unfortunately, Wooded Foothills does not help us as a fetch land. I think I'm just going to take the Murderous Rider. It's more removal. It kind of helps against, like, an aggressive deck because it has lifelink. Toxic Deluge. There's a Lotus Petal. Iona. I totally missed Iona. We did not get Bazaar of Baghdad, which is kind of sad, but I'm going to take Iona. We are light on threats, and Iona is a great one. Because, like, if you play against a deck that is primarily one color, you just name that color... If you're playing against a deck that only has removal in one color that can deal with Iona, you name that color. So, like, if you play against a blue-white deck, you name white. And then what do they do? They can't Supreme Verdict, they can't Path, they can't Swift Reconfiguration, they can't Swords, they can't, you know, can't Oust. Like, <laughs> unless they have Cryptic Bounce, there's nothing they can do. And in a deck like this, where we have so many different Hand Hate spells... We can really find out, you know, what they're going to have before we do it. Um, we have a lot of removal, so, like, Snuff Out is not as important. I think I take Recurring Nightmare. I missed Bitter Blossom, and I don't really have any super fantastic stuff with this. But, like, Recurring Nightmare Woodfall Primus is kind of a combo, I think. I think I'll, I'll take it just to increase my reanimation spell density. Uh, K Command or Snuff Out would be fine, but... I think I have enough removal. There's actual reanimate. Uh, Blood Chief's Thirst. And that's about it. Season Pyromancer is a discard outlet, but I'll take reanimate. It's just a stronger reanimation spell. One mana, lose half your life, reanimate Iona is pretty good. I wish this was a Mox Jet now. Because <laughs> then you could just, like, one turn one, entomb, reanimate. Uh, there's a Corpse Dance. There's a Vindicate. Uh, Progenitus is not really a reanimation target. Yeah, I'm going to take Vindicate. It's just really good. And we're thinking about playing white. Okay, there is a Cabal Ritual, which is not Dark Ritual. Uh, there's a Land Tax. Land Tax can actually overfill our hand and allow us to discard. So this is like sort of a discard outlet if played early. Um, I think I am going to take it. Ashiok would be good, but... Uh, Scarab God is a reanimator card. Eureka is a card we could play in a deck like this. We did have, like, Oath, but... Uh, we're going to take Pack Rat because we're a little light on discard. Self-discard. Um, Grist is really good. I don't really have the mana to splash for green. I think I take an Inkwell as, like, a another possible reanimation target. It's... Better versus blue decks. Sorry, I'm trying to get stuff sorted out for a, a house showing. So, if you see me looking at my phone frequently, um, that's what I'm trying to do. I'll take a Rishidan port. Yeah, because we, like, just tapping down mana is powerful. I have quite a few colorless lands at this point, but... I don't think I'm playing Tide Hollow Skeller. I think I'm actually going to cut most of white, except maybe land tax. It's just a super good... If we can get it, you know. 
Uh, I don't think we need to be playing Sun Titan. This is not a Luris deck, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at that. Um, I may not want Recurring Nightmare, because I don't really have any cheap creatures to sack, except maybe Pack Rat, but how many reanimation spells do I have? I have Reanimate, Exhum, Shallow Grave, Necromancy, Recurring Nightmare, and Unburial Rites. It's like six. I can probably get rid of my worst one, which is I think Recurring Nightmare. I could cut, I could cut down to like where I could run Oath. See, Toxic Deluge, and we could like Oath into these three cards. That might actually be worth it, but I would have to play green, and I have no fixing for green. Yeah, this is gonna be interesting. I'm kind of interested to see how this turns out. Wow. Someone's gonna get like a last pick tinker. Um, I'm gonna take the snuff out. Dak Faden's great, especially with the looting to get stuff into the grave, but snuff out's just good removal. As is Blood Chief's Thirst. Corpse Dance is yet another reanimation spell, and it's one that works with Ulamog. And the Cabal Ritual, which we're probably not playing. Really wish we'd had Dark Ritual so we could go for the Entomb Exhum play super early. But, I mean, Mox Pearl still lets us do that on turn two. I suppose I could Thought Seize myself as well. Like, turn two Thought Seize myself reanimate. <laughs> like, it's, I guess, a line. Something to be aware of. Hmm. I think I can actually build two versions of this deck. I think I can build whatever this version is, and then an Oath version. So let's take out the lands, and Mox Pearl will be a land in this. Group creatures separately, see what we're dealing with. So just a regular reanimator deck. We have one, two, uh, three pieces of hand hate. Yeah, I don't think I'd play Recurring Nightmare. One, two, three, four, five, like six pieces of, seven pieces of removal. That's pretty good. Two tutors. Oh, I also have him to Turok, which I didn't even think about. I can probably cut like a removal spell. And I think it's gonna be Blood Chief's Thirst. Damn, is a board wipe. Um, hmm. I don't think I need Murderous Rider. And then I need to cut like two cards if I'm gonna include Dark Depths. And maybe I just don't play Land Tax and Dam. No forests, like one plains, and then a bunch of swamps is what we need. Okay, so that's this version of the deck. Then I can try and build an Oath version. And in the Oath version, we probably wouldn't play Primus. We would not be playing Pack Rat or Mesmeric Fiend. We would be playing Oath of Druids. Maybe Assassin's Trophy? Do we have any other non-creature spells that help in this version? I guess Mox Pearl would be a land. I'm gonna add like two cards. Um, I guess I'd bring in the extra removal. I like how it added no forests, <laughs> and I would need some amount of forests here. I, I can Demonic Tutor or Imperial Seal for them, which means I'm probably not playing Rishidin Port in this version, but we do have an Oath version if we think it'll help. Otherwise, we have the like regular reanimation version, which is what I'm going to start with. So I will see you guys in round one. All right, we are on the play. Uh, we have reanimation spells. We have no way to get stuff into the grave, and we have no reanimation target. I think we mulligan. Okay, well, we have bone shards, reanimation spells, and dark depths. <laughs> so... We need to find something to reanimate. We have five cards we could draw. I'm gonna go to four. Okay, well we have Entomb and we have Demonic Tutor, so I will keep this. We'll put back Swamp and Rishidin Port. Play a Swamp, pass the turn. Mm -hmm. 
And like, look at how good this is compared to a Mox right now. So my opponent's like playing mono red, they're just gonna lose. Black Lotus is a good starting card. Talarian Academy. Suspend Ancestral Visions. Alright. It's Entomb. Guess it's gotta be Iona. We draw a Ulamog. Demonic Tutor. Um, yeah, let's go get a reanimate. Unfortunately, we cannot cast reanimate this turn, but they know we have a reanimation spell 100% because what else would we have grabbed? Okay, I'm gonna play a Bloodstained Mire, they crack it, they get a mountain, and Faithless Looting. Well, this is gonna give us more information about their deck. This is looking like Storm at the moment. But it really, like, this combination of cards you could play in almost any deck. Memory Jar. Yeah, this is this is looking like Storm to me. We've got LED and Black Lotus. Uh, so if I reanimate Iona, I name Blue. Because, like, all of the major Storm win conditions, Brain Freeze, Mind's Desire, most of the draw sevens are blue. One moment. Freaking spam calls. Here I thought it might have been important. Okay, opponent making a whole bunch of mana. I mean, if we have Brain Freeze, we do have Ulamog. Dig through time. Okay, exiling their whole grave. Not sure what they do here. They might have just felt pressured into doing this. It's interesting that all the mana we've seen is red. The good news is this is a really good matchup because we have tons of hand hate. Opponent passes. They may have like a force. But we drew duress. And that's the game. So they concede to not reveal more information about their storm deck. Does this change anything for us? I mean, I could play Vindicate. Nah, let's just run it back. Like if we just, if we have Swamp Swamp, Thought Seize and Tomb Reanimate. Like, that is the best sequence of cards. <laughs> so we just turn one Thought Seize you, see what's going on, and Tomb Iona Reanimate, win the game. Now it's possible they have a Swords, or a Path, or some other, like, white oust even, that could deal with Iona in their deck. Um, so that's something we need to be aware of, because, you know, if you're playing a Storm deck in Vintage Cube, you can always Manamorphose into an off color, or, like, they can have it out. It is possible. Whether or not it's likely, that's different. But they're playing Black Lotus, and they have um, Lion's Eye Diamonds, so... Mm, we have Demonic Tutor, Dark Depth Pack Rat Snuff Out, so that's a mulligan. Uh, we have Reanimate, we have Woodfall Primus, and we have Him to Turok. Him to Turok is really good against Storm. Um, I think I can keep this, put back Toxic Deluge, and maybe have a chance. Okay, opponent starts Faithless Looting. They loot away Talarian Academy and an island. We draw Scrubland. So play a Swamp, pass the turn. We draw another Swamp. Him to Turok. Opponent discards Brazen Borrower and Ancient Tomb. I suppose I could just draw up to seven and <laughs> ditch Woodfall Primus. Uh, they play LED and pass. We draw Necromancy, so play a Swamp. Play Liliana. Mill ourself. We mill nothing of importance. Pass the turn. I could reanimate Brazen Borrower. We could just Brazen Borrower beats. Draw a Snuff Out, so uptick Lily. Play a Scrubland. I'm actually gonna do it. Alright. Pass the turn. And we untap. We draw Ulamog. Go to combat. Attack for three. Take our opponent to 17, uptake Lily, 
Pass the turn. We're getting probed. His opponent knows what we have. They ditch an island. Or they, they play an island, excuse me. Then they pass. We untap. We draw Imperial Seal. So, go to combat. Attack for three. We hit them down to 12. Imperial Seal. We put Iona on top of our deck. Down tick Lily. Opponent is going to click us. So they're going to put Reanimate <laughs> back in our deck. Okay, so we're going to draw Lily and then mill. It's kind of funny, actually. Or we're, we're going to draw Iona and mill. I'm going to kill Click here. <laughs> because I really want Liliana to stick around. And we're going to just, just try and beat them now. Like, almost all of our reanimation spells are in the grave. That was a very clever usage of Click. Three mana. It's probably flashback faithless looting. Dig through time. Okay. Opponent's going to, like, pick up a land and something else, maybe? I mean, they, they could combo off if they have, like, um, Black Lotus, Yogwill, and anything. <laughs> like... Okay, they play a land, and they pass. We untap, we draw Toxic Deluge, go to combat, attack for three. I mean, they're four swings from dead, so they gotta do something. Uptick, no targets. Pass the turn. Put up, plays a mountain. Five mana. Bribery. <laughs> All of our animator targets are in our hand. <laughs> yeah, bribery is a good card against us, too. Opponent gets a mesmeric fiend. You got it. That is unfortunate. I wonder if they kept the hand they had based on bribery alone. If this goes to game three, we need to be very extra supremely cautious about that. Because um, we can't just immediately lose to like a ritual out bribery. Okay. Opponent is passing. We untap and draw Pack Rat. Kill Mesmeric Fiend. Uh, we get Iona back. Go to combat. Attack for three. Take him to six. Okay, play Pack Rat, pass the turn. Now if we draw another reanimation spell, which I'm not sure which ones are left in our deck, but it is possible. Lotus Petal, Black Lotus. One and one-third Black Lotuses have gone into play now. Time Twister. I mean, if they draw... Bribery or Mind's Desire into Bribery, that is potentially uh, devastating. Although, I could Toxic Deluge as long as it's not Iona. Opponent immediately plays Lion's Eye Diamond again, plays a land. Pyretic Ritual. This is a very, very strong Storm Lion. They have a ton of mana, they just need more cards. Memory Jar, that's more cards. Okay, they sack Black Lotus for blue. They sack Lotus Petal for blue, so it's probably a Mind's Desire. Mind's Desire, okay. Well, there's nothing I can do about that. So they exile Faithless Looting. They should be able to storm and win here. If they have, um... Okay, there's a bribery. If they bribery us for Iona, we lose, because they just named Black and there's... Literally no further game actions we can take, except maybe we can overwhelm Iona with a pack rat. Um, if they go for Ulamog, we can still kill them. Okay, they're gonna treasure cruise. If they just go for a brain freeze, we beat them because we just mill Ulamog. They'd have to bribery first for Ulamog. Brain freeze. Faithless looting. So it's gonna come down to sequencing here. If they've got... If they bribery for Ulamog, and then they brain freeze us, we're dead. If they brain freeze first, thinking, oh yeah, we've got them. Oh no, they could kill us with uh, Memory Jar in response to the last brain freeze mill, if we don't mill Ulamog enough times. But there's no reason for them to not bribery here, because they can cast it for free, so that it's worth it for them to just check and make sure we don't have multiple Eldrazi. Yeah. 
Okay. So they bribery. They get Ulamog. Then we brain freeze. Um, can I put a card back on top of my deck in any way? I can reanimate at instant speed, but I don't think I can put a card back on top of my deck. We'll find out. I don't think Iona will be the top creature card of our deck, though. Or of our graveyard. It is. But I don't have a way to prevent myself from draw, uh, dying on my draw step. I can reanimate Iona, and if I could attack, I could kill them, but... Alright. And they can, they can just crack Memory Jar anyway. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's run it back. Let's hope we can get a really fast reanimate with some disruption. That's what we need. All right, let's play first. Uh, this is a mulligan. This is a, oh, we can't target anything. This is close. Let's go to five. We have Entomb, we have Shallow Grave. Um, we have Corpse Dance and Necromancy. I'm gonna keep this. I'm gonna put back Fatal Push and Corpse Dance. And we're gonna lead on Swamp. Pass the turn. Okay, opponent suspends Ancestral Vision. If we draw a third land, we can entomb and attack with Ulamog. Okay. Play Pack Rat. Pass the turn. Ancestral Vision's ticking down. When it plays an island, this is Petty Theft. Okay, Everflowing Chalice on one. We untap and draw a Swamp, so this is hopefully game over. Hold Control. Entomb. We're gonna go get Ulamog, and then Shallow Grave. If they can kill Pack Rat in response, that's how they beat this. Okay, shuffle our grave back in, go to combat, hit you for 11 and annihilate all your permanents. Okay, they go to nine. We shuffle Ulamog back in. Ancestral Vision's taking down. If we draw another big threat, we can ditch it and then, yep, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that works. Go to combat. Attack for one. No sense at doing this at sorcery speed. Ancestral Visions ticks down to one. Opponent is going to probe us. They see what's happening. They play Talarian Academy. Okay. On their end step. Ditch Iona. Untap. Draw Fatal Push. Necromancy. Game over. Yeah, Reanimator's pretty good. <laughs> I'll see you guys in round two. All right, uh, this is a mulligan. Uh, we do have Entomb, we have Duress, we have him to Turok, and we have Pack Rat. I'm gonna go to five, because we can definitely do better. We've Thespian Stage Dark Depths, but we need two more lands. Now we're gonna go to four. Okay, you know what? Put three cards back on top of your deck. Plains, Swamp, and Swamp. Okay, opponent starts Forest. We draw Snuff Out. Well, at least we can cast Snuff Out. Thoughts Ease. Kogla, Rafelos, Selesnia Signet, Questing Beast, Opposition. Take Rafelos. Pass the turn. Actually, I should have taken the Signet and then um, probably snuffed out the Rafelos. Um, but you know, we untap. We draw on Burial Rites. Well, we can ditch that to like a Bone Shards. We need to. They play Questing Beast. Kill Questing Beast. We untap. We draw Corpse Dance. Just draw on the wrong half of our deck right now. Hopefully our opponent is running out of stuff to do as well. Okay, we draw Demonic Tutor. Demonic Tutor is excellent. Um, if we draw a single land. Okay, opponent plays Deranged Hermit. That's fine. Gives us some targets for Bone Shards. We draw Imperial Seal. I think this is the rare Imperial Seal for a land. Yeah. Um, Imperial Seal for Swamp. Pass the turn. I am actually dying here, though. That's the problem. <clears throat> oh, they're just not going to go for the damage? Sure. <laughs> not a problem. I think if they just paid the echo cost, I was going to die. <laughs> Okay, we untap, 
We draw a swamp, play a swamp, um, demonic tutor. So any mana source lets me attack with Ulamog with Shallow Grave. What am I demonic tutoring for? Need a demonic tutor for something that's gonna help against these squirrels. Um, I can get Liliana or I can get Toxic Deluge. The problem is I don't think either of those are really good at the moment. Um, yeah, I just didn't draw lands for too long. Because I can Bone Shards, but I don't have... I can't reanimate, and I don't have Exhum. Uh, I guess it's Toxic Deluge, actually. As long as our opponent doesn't have, like, Land Kogla, we can just Toxic Deluge X1 to kill everything. If we draw land. But they need to not play anything with, like, more than two toughness. Okay, that's it. Plow Under's pretty good. Yeah, we were dead a lot sooner than that, because our opponent made a mistake with Deranged Hermit, but... It might be time to play the Oath version of this deck. So, we're gonna try that. We're gonna try Oath Reanimator here. I would like to play first. Uh, yeah, we've got Oath of Druids, so we'll keep. It's gonna be Iona or it's gonna be Ulamog. We have one white mana and a dam. Uh, we also have Snuff Out, which, you know, is important against a green deck to have removal. Lead on a Swamp, pass the turn, start Mana Dork, please. Any Mana Dork. Dang. Okay. Uh, we draw Toxic Deluge, so we'll play a Scrubble Land. We're going to hide the fact that we have green in this deck, because then opponent might get suspicious. Okay, that's a Signet. That's a thing. Uh, we're going to Sandbag here. I mean, they're green. They gotta cast stuff. Questing Beast? Birthing Pod. That's interesting. Uh, okay. Draw a Demonic Tutor. What am I tutoring for? I could just Demonic Tutor for a land or a Mox. Because the Mox gives me access to Dam and prevents me from having to discard this turn. Otherwise, I could just draw Iona and then ditch her into the grave and like be like haha i'm gonna reanimate um yeah i'm actually gonna get the mox pearl here and play it so i don't have to discard this is an extremely risky play <laughs> like i think opponent thinks something is up and they're not sure if they get to opposition that would be really bad for us Okay, they play Rafelos. They're gonna immediately pod him. It might be Rexage on Pearl. Okay, Edric. Okay, we draw Infernal Grasp. Well, let's go for the gotcha. Oath. So they can't immediately pod into Rexage or Acidic Slime here. Um, because they don't have the right mana costs. But they could be holding one. It was kind of a waste of a demonic tutor if they were, too. Okay, opponent is going to go to combat and attack to draw a card. Manamorphose into blue green. This could be an opposition. Elvish Mystic. Natural Order. So, Woodfall Primus. Questing Beast. Misclick? Yeah, probably. So we are going to uh, Infernal Grasp Questing Beast. Untap Oath of Druids. Choose target opponent that chooses... First player, let's see. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player chooses target opponent that controls more players than they. Okay. Name green. We draw on burial rites. So, play a forest, pass the turn. Opponent can still cast blue spells or activate pod. So what we're going to do is wait until that happens, and then kill Edric so that they can't pod into something. They will get an oath trigger, but they're playing a lot of dorks. Opponent plays a coalition relic. We untap, we draw exhum. So if they kill Iona, we can reanimate her immediately. They charge up Coalition Relic, we hit them for 7. 
There are three swings from dead, so two more attacks and they'll die. Okay, opponent gets to oath us and see what they can put into play. Acidic Slime. I mean, kill oath, but that's actually bad for them. I don't have another instant speed piece of removal, so if they have a really good six drop, they can pot into it. And then, like, my hope scenario is, like, I can overload dam and then exhume, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. Okay, opponent is unable to use their coalition relic mana. They're not potting, which I think is interesting. They play a land. Okay, they are potting. They get a six drop. Kogla. They're going to have it fight Iona. Okay. Depends on what else they do here, but we can just unburial rights Iona named Green again. They play Scoos. Okay, let's draw a land. Hmm. Yeah, Unburial Rights Iona. Oh, they can eat her! Oh, I'm so dumb! <laughs> uh, this means that Ulamog is the only creature left in my deck, and I cannot reanimate Ulamog, so I am in trouble. I have the Dark Depths combo, so I'm not like 100% out of this game. But it is not looking good for me. I do have two board wipes in hand and a lot of removal, so I have tons of time. But they have a pod. Okay, opponent plays Courser. They play a land. They're drawing another land. At least until they pod. They probably eat Unburial Rites. I also have Liliana. So, like, I can... Um, I can Liliana to, to win. Opponent is drawing a Deranged Hermit. They eat Courser of Crufix. They eat another creature. They eat Acidic Slime. They're just trying to maximize damage here while leaving up mana to deal with potential reanimator shenanigans. So we're going to take seven and go to nine. We draw a Swamp. Play a Swamp. Overload. No. No, no, no. Blood Chief's Thirst. Okay, they're gonna eat on burial rites, that's fine. I could also necromancy something out of their grave, because Kogla's pretty big. Okay, opponent charges up Coalition Relic. They draw a deranged hermit. Get to add mana. They add blue. If they play opposition, I think we're dead. Okay, they play the hermit. Make a bunch of squirrels. They attack us for two. We're down to seven. If they don't pod, we Toxic Deluge. If they do pod, we might have to overload Dam. We're going to shuffle their deck. There's a Crater Hoof on top. And it is an eight mana, five, five with haste. So if I Toxic Deluge, I'm going to die. I can Imperial Seal, and that also kills me. <laughs> Um, all right, so let's do the only thing that actually lets me survive for a turn. Pass the turn. I can't make them shuffle. If they have a single creature, I just die. Mm, they cannot cast Hoof. Can I entomb anything? Anything at all that would be useful? I think the answer is no. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm dead. Let's entomb and look at my deck, because I'm pretty sure I only have the two creatures because of Oath. That is correct. Um, I have neither Dark Depths nor... Yeah, I got completely destroyed by a Scavenging Ooze, so, alright. You got us, opponent. So switching to the Oath version may have been a mistake, but hey, we still got round three. I'll see you guys there. All right, this seems like a pretty decent hand. We're going to keep. Opponent leads on a Steam Vents. We untap. Draw a Swamp. Swamp is good. Play Swamp. Pass the turn. So probably what I'm going to do is Entomb Iona and then um, him to Turok, my opponent. Then Demonic Tutor for Reanimate on turn three. Okay, opponent plays a Black Cleave Cliffs into a Magda Brazen Outlaw. And while we're not scared of Magda, Entomb, 
Iona. We draw a Mesmeric Fiend. Play a Swamp. Him to Turok. Discards two lands. Opponent goes to combat, attacks us for two. Makes a treasure token. They play a Lava Claw Reaches and a Simic Signet. Okay, they could really be playing anything at this point. So, play Planes. Demonic Tutor. This card's so much better than a Mox in this deck. Mana Leak. Sad face. Pass the turn. Opponent Expressive Iteration, so they're like maybe like a Grixis Tempo deck, I suppose. They exile an Underground Sea, they draw a card, they make a treasure. We untap, draw Mox Pearl, play Mox Pearl, play Mesmeric Fiend, see what their two cards in hand are, land and land. Okay, play Pack Rat. Pass the turn. So we were kind of on the backup plan of Pack Rat Beats until we draw a uh, reanimation spell. If they attack with Magda, we 100% block. They play a mountain. It might be Animate Lava Claw Reaches. Holagon's Command, killing Mox Pearl and Pack Rat. And they are attacking for one to make a treasure. Yes, we will trade. So the last card in hand is an island. Draw a swamp. Play a swamp. Pass the turn. We do have to get up to five mana, potentially for a unburial rights. Put a plays an island, which we knew about. We're gonna be dead very quickly to a lava claw reaches if we can't do anything. If we draw shallow grave, we might be able to bone shard something. They hit us for a lot. By a lot, I mean five. We go to eleven. Untap, draw a Corpse Dance. So we can Corpse Dance Ulamog if um, our opponent plays a creature that sticks on board or a Planeswalker. Okay, opponent plays a land. Yeah, it looks like they're just on the Lava Claw Reaches plan. Could Corpse Dance a Mesmeric Fiend to block? I might have to do that to stay alive. We take six, go to five, and we draw Necromancy. So Necromancy Iona, and I think we name Red, because our life total is so low. Pass the turn. This is a Brazen Borrower, it's an Infernal Grasp, okay. So we are actually dead. All right, opponent got us. But we learned some stuff, and Iona is not particularly fantastic against them. Um, I don't think we switch up what we're doing here. I think we stay on this plan and run it back. Primus might be a lot better against them. Uh, we have Exhum. That's a mulligan. Thoughtseize, Fatal Push, Mox Pearl's not going to do it. Uh, this is not going to do it either. I mean, we have Imperial Seal, so we got to put three cards back. We need two lands for sure. I think I'm going to put back Duress and keep Thoughtseize just on the off chance I need to take a creature. So Thoughtseize you. K Command, Is It Signet, Fable of the Mirror Breaker, Factor Fiction. We'll take Is It Signet. And pass the turn. Okay. Opponent starts Lava Claw Reaches. We untap. We draw Reanimate. Okay. So Imperial Seal, we'll put Entomb on top of our deck. Okay, pass the turn. I'm gonna play the Steam Vents untapped, we draw Entomb. So Entomb. Uh, I think we get Woodfall Primus. Reanimate Woodfall Primus. They have Mana Leak. Kill Steam Vents. Pass the turn. Opponent draws. They play the mountain we know about. We draw a swamp. Go to combat. Attack for six. Dig him to 12. Play a swamp. Pass the turn. 
Pona draws. They play Black Cleave Cliffs into Fable of the Mirror Breaker, I think. That will keep them alive. We untap. We draw Mesmeric Fiend, so go to combat. Attack for six. Pona goes to six. Mesmeric Fiend. Look at our opponent's hand. Factor Fiction, Dire Fleet, Daredevil, Infernal Grasp, Pestermite. I think I have to take Infernal Grasp here. Okay, pass the turn. Opponent untaps. They can ditch up to two cards to draw up to two more. They ditch K Command. Uh, Pestermite can keep them alive for a turn. They might be able to tempo us out that way. Fable of the Mirror Breaker is a combo with Pestermite. They did find an island anyway. They can play Dire Fleet Daredevil just to have another body. I think we've lost. Oh, Dragon's Rage Channeler. Okay. But we have no way to stop them from tapping our guy. Okay, go to combat. Your Pester might tap it down. They don't. They're just going to chump. Okay, they do. Guess maybe I was supposed to attack with both, but then they could have killed uh, Mesmeric Fiend and gotten back in Infernal Grasp. I don't know. Pass the turn. Factor Fiction. You can have all these, or you're going to have Expressive Iteration, because none of these matter. <clears throat> the opponent, I think, was just supposed to Pester Might tap Woodfall Primus. They can do that this turn, but then they can't cast Expressive Iteration because they don't have double blue, unless they attack with the Goblin token. Opponent puts Expressive Iteration in the grave. They untap. They flip Reflection of Kiki Jiki. They can make lethal tokens of Pester Might, lethal copies of tokens. Um... If we can draw a removal spell, I think we can survive. Do I block? I don't think I block. We did not draw a removal spell. Go to combat. Okay, Pester Might. Yep. If I had drawn... Actually, is it in my sideboard? It totally might be in my sideboard. Yeah, if I had drawn, like, Infernal Grasp... Um... I could have prevented this, but unfortunate. I think we could have pretty easily 2-1 to this league. Uh, Reanimator is sweet. I kind of kept some questionable hands, but I hope you all enjoyed this content. If you did, please leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe to the channel if you're so inclined, and remember you can follow me over on Twitch, same username over there as you find me on here. Uh, I also have a Discord and a Patreon. Link is in the description down below. Uh, you're all wonderful human beings. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Thank you.